getting a little closer with the bike. Got the book carbs back on. Uh, everything seems to be getting better. Uh, they still don't run great, but uh, anyway, I think when you have an old bike like this sitting around a few years, if you expect the carbs to be perfect, you're asking a lot. You know, you got to run it a while, maybe take the carbs off again, you know, and uh, fiddle them a little bit more. But it's running pretty decent, so uh, I'm to the point that uh, I'm getting ready to uh, sink the carbs up. So what I got is I've done sinking prior with vacuum gauges. You know, you put it at the bottom of the carb, basically. This type of is an airflow type thing. You put it right in the, right on the, the, the snorkel here, I guess you'd call it. So you do that, and you got this little cool little orange thing here. It moves around, and you adjust the carburetors to suit. So let me get the bike warmed up. You want to get the bike warmed up, you know, as as if it was running. So I'll put it outside for a little bit, let it warm up, set it up, and uh, show you how to do it. It's uh, I've never used this before, and uh, eh, I don't know. Maybe it's not as accurate as the manometer, you know, the vacuum gauge, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. You know, if you got four carbs and you got something to it receives into, uh, I don't think you can go wrong for the price. You know, you get the thing running and just get all the numbers the same. Get this orange arrow about the same and I think you're good to go. Other people may say that the, you know, the vacuum gauge weighs better. Uh, they were a lot more money. I really didn't want to do that. So anyway, let me set it up and uh, we'll go from there. Now, anytime you're sinking one of these bikes, uh, you know, more than one cylinder, of course, there's always one carburetor that's not sinkable. There's no adjustment on it. On this bike, it's this one. Uh, so this tube goes to this side, which is a little confusing when you're doing it. But uh, anyway, if you look down here, there's no screw to adjust the sinking. On this one and this one here, there is a screw adjusting it. And let's see if I can get in there. You see them right in there under that black hose. I think you can see that there's two screws right next to each other. One is for the one and one is for the forward one, of course. So when you put this meter in here, you're going to be able to uh, fiddle with that screw and that's going to that's gonna sync your carburetors together. Now if we look on the other side, let me go over there. Now if you look on the other side, there's only one screw down there. Uh, you can see it right there by that horizontal, it's on the, this carburetor here. And there's nothing on this, that's the one that isn't sinkable. So that's your baseline. So what we'll do, we'll start it up. We'll see what this is. And again, this carburetor has this snout over here. So again, it's a little confusing with this bike since uh, the way it's laid out, but this carburetor is this over here. So if this says seven, uh, we're gonna try to get them all to seven, okay? So let me just show you an example of uh, doing it. You know, keep adjusting it. Again, this one you can adjust. The other ones you can. Uh, again, take a little bit of time. And, you know, these all have vacuum hoses at the bottom of these carburetors. And you got to be cognizant. Sometimes the vacuum hoses are hooked together. Uh, so if they are hooked together, you may want to, you know, 
pinch one so you're just doing individual carburetors when you do your initial sink. But I like to do my final sink with the vacuum lines hooked up just the way they are when you're running. I think you get a little better result out of that. So anyway, this is a pretty cool uh, device here. I've uh, you know, never used one before. I needed to get something to sink the bike and this worked out pretty well. It fits right in there as you can see. Pretty cool. So hope you enjoyed. Bye.